Hello and good afternoon friends, welcome to the CC Educate Live Lecture. Dear friends, with our ongoing series on phase equilibria, today we would be conducting a second lecture in the series and uh, in this session uh, particularly we would be talking on uh, 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 the physical uh, significance of the phase equilibria as well as what information we could get from a phase rule. We would be discussing on uh, degree of freedom as well as phase rule and for this very discussion we have once again with us in our studios uh, Dr. Amit Kumar. Dr. Amit Kumar is senior assistant professor in department of chemistry Dal Singh College University of Delhi. So let's welcome our guest Dr. Amit Kumar and let's try to get in depth knowledge on the topic. Hello sir welcome to the Hello, lecture. Kitika. Uh, first of all as is usual let me first of all wish you very good afternoon to all my viewers, dear viewers, as we have been having the previous lecture in this series, the phase equilibria, where we have learned several topics. We learned the concept of phase, what actually is a phase means. And we have also tried to clear the, the difference between uh, uh, a phase and a state of a system, what actually is the physical significance of the two terms that we are also that we have also worked on and in addition we have also tried to understand that if in a given system how can we determine the number of phases which are present in the system. So suppose for example we did take a number of examples and out of which we try to see uh, by just analyzing the system how we can determine the number of phases present in the system. Having said this uh, we we also stressed upon the fact that phase equilibria is basically uh, is equilibrium with respect to with respect to the with respect to the transport of matter between between different phases of the system and so without actually conversion of one chemical species into other so with this we also tried to formulate the the criteria for equilibrium between phases and the only criteria we did observe that uh, that exists for or the condition that exists for equilibrium between phases is that the chemical potential of all the chemical species which are present in different phases should have the same chemical potential values in all the phases. That is basically the criteria for equilibrium between phases. Now having said this, having said this now in this uh, lecture we would like to stress upon basically how and why we need the description of state of a system. As you already know from your thermodynamics topic that uh, for any thermodynamic consideration you require to describe the physical state of system and description of state of system requires specifying the values of a number of state variables for example temperature, pressure and the composition of the system. And there we also try to understand that it is only the number of independent variables which are required to be stated and it is not that all the dependent variables we are required to specify. So here also from thermodynamic point of view a thermodynamic description of equilibrium state of system having several phases and several chemical species it is required for us to specify the temperature, pressure and the composition of the system. As far as the temperature and pressure is concerned. I would like to point it out to the viewers that so long as there is no adiabatic or rigid wall which separates the phases present in the system, then the temperature and pressure of all the phases which are in equilibrium position that remains same. So the temperature and pressure of the system at equilibrium would also be 
the temperature and pressure of each phase present in the system. As far as the composition is concerned, there are two ways of describing the composition. We can make use of specifying the values of intensive composition terms, thereby we will be we will be describing the intensive composition of the system. On the other hand, if we specify the values of extensive composition terms, then in that situation we would say we have specified the extensive composition of the system. Now, what are intensive composition terms and what is the meaning of extensive composition terms? Composition means what the system is made up of and how much is there quantity wise, how much is the quantity of various chemical species which are present in the system. So, as we all know, if we describe the composition of the system in terms of, uh, in terms of amount fractions or any other intensive concentration terms then it means we are specifying the intensive composition of the system. On the other hand, if we specify the amount in terms of mass of various chemical species present or the number of moles of various chemical species present, it means we are specifying the extensive composition of the system. Now, having said this, Having said this, there are two intensive variables which are required to be specified in addition to composition terms for different phases. Therefore, amount fractions or number of moles of each species in every phase present in the system. So, herefore, it means that for the purpose of describing the state of the system for the phase equilibrium studies, we require to specify the temperature, pressure and the various intensive composition terms. That means, amount fractions of various chemical constituents present in each and every phase of the system. So, it means if we specify the intensive variables that means amount fraction of any chemical constituent present in a given phase, then it means we are trying to specify intensive state of the system or on the other hand in addition to temperature and pressure, we specify the number of moles of each chemical species present in each and every phase, then it means we are trying to specify the extensive state of the system. You must be aware that in thermodynamics we said that it is the temperature pressure in addition to number of moles of various chemical constituents which are present in the system is required to be specified. So, it means there for thermodynamic purpose we had specified the extensive state of the system, but here, but here for the purpose of phase equilibrium studies if we specify the temperature, pressure and the, num and the amount fraction of each and every constituent present in every each and every phase, then it means we have specified the intensive state of the system. So, now the question arises here in phase equilibrium, why we require only intensive state of the system why it is not required to specify the extensive state or in other words why it is immaterial to specify the number of moles of various co constituents present in the system in different phases. The answer to this question lies in the fact that the criteria for equilibrium between phases is it is that the chemical potential of all the chemical constituents present in each and every phase of the system should be same value, should be a same value. So, what it does mean? That it only the criteria for phase equilibria requires only one thing that 
chemical potential values of various chemical constituents present in the system in each and every phase. And what is a chemical potential? Chemical potential is nothing but molar Gibbs free energy for a pure substance and partial molar Gibbs free energy for a substance present in a mixture. So, therefore, chemical potential is a is an is an intensive property because it is either molar Gibbs free energy or partial molar Gibbs free energy. So, chemical potential is an intensive property because chemical potential is an intensive property since it is it would be related only to the intensive state variables of the system. For example, temperature, pressure and the intensive composition terms that is amount fractions of various chemical constituents present in different phases of the system. So, it means that that a knowledge of chemical potential is required which is related to only the intensive composition terms. So, even if we specify the intensive composition of the system that is sufficient for the purpose of phase equilibria studies. And this is why for phase e for the purpose of phase equilibrium studies we specify only intensive state of the system by specifying temperature, pressure and amount fractions of various constituents present in each and every phase of the system. Now, having said this, now I would like to stress upon one very important fact how these amount fractions are specified. There is a specific notation for specifying the composition. So, notation for intensive composition variables is that now you can see this should be a small x x subscript c parenthesis p. What it does mean? This x c p means that x denotes the symbol for amount fraction of a chemical species. This x should be a small x in the notation and this c means the number of component, which component we are talking about. If x 1 is written, it means we are talking about amount fraction of component 1. If we in parenthesis p signifies which phase we are going to talk about. If p is 1, it means x 1 parenthesis 1. It means amount fraction of component 1 if instead of c if you have 1 here and instead of p if you have 1 here it means amount fraction of component 1 in phase number 1. If suppose there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to p phases and suppose there are there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to c constituents independent constituents which are called components. So, then x 1 1 would mean that we are talking about amount fraction of component 1 in phase number 1. If x 1 parenthesis 2 is written, it means we are going to talk about amount fraction of component 1 in phase number 2 and so on. So, this was about the notations of amount fraction terms. Right. Now, it is an important point to note that only description of intensive state is required because the criteria for equilibrium between phases only requires the equality of chemical species. That is what we have talked about and chemical species is an intense and chemical potential is an intensive property and depends only on intensive variable of state. Now, this point can be illustrated with the help of an example. For example, in a two phase system which consists of an aqueous solution of sodium chloride and sodium chloride solid as well. So, sodium chloride solid as you all know from your previous knowledge in the previous lecture, sodium chloride solid will constitute one phase that is solid phase and aqueous solution of sodium chloride will constitute another phase that will be a liquid phase. So, 
now sodium chloride aqueous solution will be a saturated solution because so long as it is not saturated system will not be in equilibrium state because sodium chloride solid also is required to be present in the system if you are required to have two phases as the system is constituted. If such a system is maintained at fixed temperature and pressure it means the system is in state of equilibrium then the concentration of dissolved sodium chloride we all know that at fixed temperature pressure in the saturated solution is independent of the mass of each phase present in the system. What we mean to say is molar value molarity value of sodium chloride present in aqueous solution will be will always be a same no matter the solution is uh, is 200 milliliter 400 milliliter or is 1 liter it means the size of the phase or total mass of the phase does not count and does not matter to decide what should be the concentration of sodium chloride in terms of intensive con composition such as molarity or amount fraction that will always be remain same no matter you have solution 100 milliliter 200 milliliter or 600 milliliter or for that matter 1 liter if it is in equilibrium along with sodium chloride solid phase. So, it means that the intensive composition terms does not does not depend on the size or mass of any of the phase which are present in the system as a result we only require specification of intensive composition terms or in other words we require only uh, description of intensive state of system for for the purpose of describing the state of system for the phase equilibria studies. Now, having said this, the equilibrium intensive state is described by specifying the intensive variables. It means as I have already said to you and as I have already talked to you that you require temperature, pressure and mole fraction of each chemical species present in every phase of the system. So, we take up a one example that we if suppose there are P phases and there are C components or in other words independent constituents. What is the difference between component and constituent that I will try to make it little clear a little later. But here we can see if it is so, if there are C constituents and P phases then all you need to do is you need to specify temperature of system, you need to specify pressure of system and along with this you need to specify amount fraction component 1 in phase 1, amount fraction component 2 in phase 1 and so on so forth up to amount fraction component C in phase 1. So, all these are amount fraction values in phase number 1. Similarly, you will specify amount fraction of each and every constituent present in phase number 2, 3 and so on so forth you will keep continue, keep on continuing to, uh, to specify the value of amount fraction of uh, all the chemical constituents present in phase number P. In this manner you would have you would have specified the value of temperature, pressure and amount fractions of all the constituents in all the phases that is how intensive composition or intensive state of a system is described. But now the question arises there if there are uh, n number of chemical constituents there will be n um, uh, c number of chemical constituents and p number of phases in which all these constituents are present. So, it means c into p amount fraction terms or amount fraction values you are required to specify for all these p phases being present in the system in addition to the temperature and pressure value of the system. So, the question arises do you really need to specify so many number of uh, intensive variables to in order to describe the uh, intensive state of system? Answer to this question is no we need not specify all these uh, all these state variables why because these state variables in a given system these intensive state variables would be related to each other by way of some mathematical equations and we should try and look to find out those mathematical equations 
in order in order to find out how many intensive state variables we are required to specify in order to describe the intensive state of the system completely. So, it means not all, but, but less than the total number of val variables are required to be specified in order to in order to describe the state of the system completely. And the reason I have already cleared it to you that it is so because all these intensive state variables are related to each other by way of certain mathematical equations. So, now the idea is that we should if it is so then the idea is that we should first of all should try and find that how many such equations exist so that we can solve for those equations and we can determine the values of the those many state variables as is the number of equations which are available. The remaining intensive state variables would be required to be specified by us if we want to describe the state of the system completely. And therefore, this very observation makes the foundation for introduction of a very important topic that is called the degree of freedom. Let us see what the degree of freedom actually is in the discussion of phase equilibria. The degree of freedom or the variance of an equilibrium state of a system is defined as the number of independent intensive variables that are needed to be specified to specify the intensive state of the system. So, now the question is how we can determine the variance or this degree of freedom. I would like to once again stress upon the definition of degree of freedom of the system or variance of the system. The degree of freedom or variance means out of the total number of variables which are required to be specified how many are independent variables? That means, their value does not depend on other variables. If we specify the value of these independent variables, then the remaining dependent variables, then the value of remaining dependent variables are not is not required to be specified their value their value automatically gets fixed. So, it means degree of freedom is the number of such intensive state variables which we are required to specify or in other words whose value we can alter or we can change without producing any change in the state of the system. So, now the next question arises how to determine this variance or this degree of freedom of the system. The answer lies the answer to this question lies in the knowledge of phase rule. It is the phase rule which is a simple mathematical relation using which we can determine the degree of freedom that means the number of such variables which can be varied independently or whose values whose value we can change without producing any change in the state of the system. We shall also understand this degree of freedom from the viewpoint of phase diagram when that discussion is introduced. 
So, here for the symbolic representation of various variables which occurs in the phase rule, let me point it out to you. The phase rule is a simple equation which relate f, c and t and the rule is f equals to c minus p plus 2 where f is degree of freedom that means the number of intensive state variables which, which, which are independent whose value is required to be specified or the value of these many variables can be changed without producing any change in the state of the system. And this is related to C which is nothing but number of independent chemical constituents and is also called the number of components. What is the difference between a constituent and a component? I have already stated that this difference would be little clear when we will progress our discussion on the basis of interpretation of the phase rule when we try to take up certain examples. For the time being we can only say independent chemical constituents is nothing but the chemical constituents which constitute the system. So, it means the number of chemical species which are present in the system. Now, P is number of phases, how many phases are present in the system. So, this phase rule is a simple rule for determining the least number of intensive variables or minimum number of intensive variables which are independent variables that do not depend on phase volume or mass. And for example, these variables are temperature, pressure, density or concentration. The value of these variables can be changed without changing the equilibrium state of the system. So, phase rule helps us to determine the degree of freedom which is nothing but the least number of intensive state variables required to define the state of the system. Other intensive state variables we need not bother about because their value gets fixed once we specify the value of these intensive state variables which are independent or in other words we can also view this degree of freedom as the number of state variables which whose value can be changed without producing any change in the state of the system. And these are those variables which are independent which means that these the values of these variables does not depend on phase volume or mass these are intensive state variables. So, It is important to note from the phase rule mathematical equation that as number of constituents rises, the degree of freedom rises. The degree of freedom gets decreased when the number of phases which are present in the system they do rise. So, this is how we should learn the phase rule. This mathematical equation sometimes student commit a mistake by wrongly writing it p minus c plus 2. We should just concentrate on the formula that as number of constituent rises, degree of freedom rises, as number of phases rises, degree of freedom decreases. So, it means f equal to c minus p plus 2, c always positive, p always having a negative sign. So, with this rule, so with this discussion, we now require to derive the phase rule. So, we will now switch on to the derivation of phase rule. Thank you. Good afternoon friends, once again we start with the discussion of phase rule as we have already pointed it out to you that in order to 
to memorize the phase rule it is a thumb rule that we should understand as the number of constituent rises the degree of freedom rises as the number of phases increases the degree of freedom decreases this when if we if we, if we uh, learn the phase rule from uh, this standpoint we will always be reproducing the same phase rule equation that f equals to c minus p plus 2 that is how we should remember the phase rule. We can also have a look at uh, how this actually occurs by virtue of taking some examples. Uh, we will take some examples in which uh, uh, the number of constituents is, uh, is, is observed to rise first and then we will see those examples when number of phases will rise and we will say uh, both these changes will introduce uh, will lead to or will lead to uh, uh, opposite effects in terms of degree of freedom. One will uh, lead to increase in degree of freedom, one will lead to a decrease in degree of freedom. Just have a look at it. So, you see uh, if we consider a system which has liquid water in equilibrium with its vapor. So, in the system you have only water. So, the number of constituent is 1 f equal to c minus p plus 2. So, c is 1 here. So, this is 1 minus p, but there are here are here we have two phases water in liquid state liquid phase and water vapor vapor phase. So, two phases. So, c is 1 minus p is 2 plus 2. So, 1 minus 2 plus 2 is equal to 1. Similarly, if you have liquid ethyl alcohol and along with this you have its vapors, then again it will contribute the liquid phase as one phase and vapor phase as other phase, so two phases and ethyl alcohol is just one chemical species. So, therefore, you will put just one for C. So, F equal to C which is 1 minus P which is 2 plus 2 equal to 1. So, but now consider a system, let us add in this liquid water plus vapor system, in this system let us add liquid ethanol. We all know that water and ethanol are miscible in all proportion. So, what will happen? Water when is added to this system, uh, uh, sorry, when liquid ethanol is added to the system 1 which has only liquid water along with it, its vapors, then the system is when is allowed to reach the equilibrium state. At equilibrium, you will have a liquid solution of water and ethanol and you will have vapor phase which will also be a vapor mixture of water and ethanol because both these are volatile in nature. So, therefore, how many constituents you have? You have water and you have ethanol in the system. So, you have two constituents. So, you will and in addition you again have to just two phases. So, that is a, a liquid phase and gas phase. So, C minus P plus 2 phase rule that is C 2 P 2 and plus 2. C is 2 minus P is 2 plus 2 equal to 2. So, you can easily see when we have switched on from our system having one uh, component to two component the degree of freedom rises. Now, see if we have liquid water and liquid benzyl alcohol and along with we have its the vapors of this mixture. Water and liquid benzyl alcohol we all know these are immiscible, they are not miscible. So, therefore, they will constitute as two different liquid layers. So, it means two different phases along with there will be third phase that is vapor phase. So, total number of phases in this system is 3 whereas, whereas constituents is still 2 water and liquid benzyl alcohol. So, we can compare system 2 with system 3. System 2 has two phases, system 3 has three phases, but the number of constituents is 2 in both the systems. So, constituents is same when you increase the number of phases from this system liquid water ethanol mixture to liquid water liquid benzyl alcohol system the number of phases gets increased by 1 
and you can see accordingly degree of freedom gets decreased by 1. Here the degree of freedom for water liquid ethanol system, the degree of freedom is 2, for water liquid benzyl alcohol system, degree of freedom is 1. So, from this standpoint, it is very clear that as the number of phases rises in the system, the degree of freedom gets decreased. On the other hand, if the number of constituents, independent constituents rises in the system, the degree of freedom increases. Right. So, let us now derive the phase rule and the phase rule first of all we would derive for a non-reactive system. A non-reactive system means we consider a system in which several phases and several cons chemical constituents are present. But all these chemical constituents which are present in the system, they do not undergo a chemical reaction. That means, they do not react chemically, they do interact with each other by virtue of physical interactions, by virtue of uh, Van der Waal forces of interactions or so. But they do not interact chemically, that means there is no chemical reaction which occurs between various chemical constituents which are present in the system and such a system is called as is known as non-reactive system. So, now let us uh, derive phase rule for such uh, non-reactive system first. Let us consider a system in its equilibrium state which is having uh, p number of phases and c number of independent chemical constituents. So, it means there are p phases and c chem independent chemical constituents. So, for the purpose of derivation of phase rule, we will make two assumptions. One is that there is no chemical reaction occurs, we have already considered we are going to derive phase rule for a non-reactive system. Second assumption which we will go to make is each chemical species is present in each and every phase. It means all the c chemical constituents independent chemical constituents are present in each phase which is uh, that is present in the system. If it is so, then we should first of all, we should first of all look for how many number of variables we are required to specify in order to describe the state of the system completely. In order to do that, we have we can see over here is a table. This table illustrates the variables and also how many num and, and, and also their numbers, how many number of these variables which are required to be specified. So, we start with this. First variable is temperature. The temperature is same for all the phases which are present in the in the in, in equilibrium state of system provided there is no uh, adiabatic or uh, rigid boundary bit exists between these phases. So, therefore, so therefore, temperature is just one variable for the system. Similarly, pressure is just one variable for the system. Now, in addition composition terms, as we have already said amount fraction of each constituent present in each phase is required to be specified. Since there are C constituents each of the C constituent is present in every phase, in every phase that is P number of phases. So, it means you are required to specify P into C that is P C, the multiple factor P C should be the number of such composition terms or amount fraction terms which are required to be specified. If we take the total of total number of the variables which we have listed over here, the total number of intensive state variables that is needed to be specified is P C plus 1 plus 1, 1 temperature, 1 pressure is that is P C plus 2, right. So, we have already discussed the total number of variables which we have which we are required to specify in order to describe the state of the system. Now, let us see how many equations are available which relate these state variables, intensive state variables of the system. So, for this purpose also we have made a tabular illustration over here. In this tabular illustration you can see 
the description of types of equation is considered first and also is given how many numbers of this of a part of particular type of equation is available. So, first type that the we know we are we all have a knowledge that the sum of amount fractions in each phase of all the chemical constituents which are present should be equal to 1. It means amount x 1 1 means amount fraction component 1 in phase 1 plus x 2 1 amount fraction component 2 in phase 1 plus so on and so forth we will keep on adding up to amount x c 1 amount fraction component c in phase 1. So, it means sum of amount fractions of all the chemical constituents present in phase 1 equal to 1. Similarly, we can sum amount fraction of all the constituent present in phase 2 that is equal to 1. So, we will keep we can keep on writing the equation there will be p such equations because there is there are p number of phases that are present in the system for each phase there is there, there is one there is one equation. So, total number of phase p so p is p number of equation of the type which we have discussed are available or are present. Having said this let us consider second type of equation another equation which exists which occur is thermodynamic condition of phase equilibria. Therefore, the thermodynamic condition of phase equilibria means that means that the means the chemical means the chemical potential of each constituent will have the same value in all the phases. So, let us consider for constituent 1 chemic mu is symbol mu is symbol mu symbol for chemical potential. So, mu 1 1 means chemical potential component 1 in phase 1 equal to chemical potential component 1 in phase 2 equal to chemical potential component 1 in phase 3 equal to its chemical potential in phase 4 and so on so forth up to its chemical potential in phase number p. So, for constituent 1 there would be in this first line you can see there would be p minus 1 equal to science it means p minus such chemical equilibrium thermodynamic condition of phase equilibria exist and there are c constituents for each or, or independent constituent or component. So, it means for each component we will have p minus 1 equations and since there are c constitu independent constituent or components which are present in each of p phases it means for each constituent there is p minus 1 equation. So, c into p minus 1 is total number of equations which are pre which are available or present as the con thermodynamic conditions of phase equilibria. So, we should add the both type of equations and we come up to a sum that is p is number of equations which are available from sum of amount fraction condition and c time p minus 1 is num number of equation thermo which arise from thermodynamic condition of phase equilibria. When we sum the two we get total number of equation available p plus c times p minus 1. So, the phase rule really is, is, is basically is a rule which help to determine degree of freedom or variance. So, here we can directly calculate variance it means the variance or degree of freedom f equal to total number of intensive variables which are required to be specified from this total number you can we can subtract total number of equations available because the number of equations available we can solve these equations in order to determine the value of the intensive state variables as many state in you know we can determine the values of intensive state variables as many state variables as many the number of equations are available. So, it means once we subtract the number of equation available from total number of variables which are required to be specified what we get is the number of intensive state variables which are independent in nature. Now, their value does not depend on any other intensive state variable. So, these values 
these the 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 value of inten of independent intensive state variables is required to be specified then only the description of the system is complete so therefore f equal to degree of freedom equals to equal to total number of intensive variable minus total number of equation available if you recall black here itself just two slides back we have already discussed that total number of variables is p c plus 2 and total number of equation available is p plus c times p minus 1. So, we can solve for this equation what we get is p c plus 2 this we can remove the bracket we can remove this internal bracket what we get p plus c p minus c we can remove this bracket in this equation what we get is f equal to p c plus 2 minus p minus c p plus c because the sign changes as these terms are taken outside the bracket. So, p c cancels with p c because both p c have opposite sign. So, what we have f equal to c minus p plus 2. So, in this way we have derived the phase rule. So, phase rule equation as it says f equal to c minus p plus 2. Now, we consider suppose that our system is a still a known reactive system that means the, the chemical constituents which are present in the system they do not react, but now we lift our second assumption. We say that now let us suppose that all the chemical constituents are not present in all the phases. Will this lifting of assumption lead to a, a change in the derived equation of phase rule or not? This is the objective which needs to be fulfilled by virtue of making observation what happens when this derivation is done. So, for this purpose let us do this derivation by considering a system in which let us say there are c independent chemical constituents and there are p number of phases and all these chemical constituents are not present in all the number of phases. Let us say first constituent is not present in first phase. So, it means all the constituents are present in p minus number of p minus 1 number of phases, but except for phase number 1. The so, first constituent is not present in first phase. Let us see for this system will the phase rule equation will be different or will be same. Let us have a look at it. Now, we can again uh, derive the phase rule for this uh, system uh, by making a tabular illustration of requirement of the number of variables and of the number of equations available. So, let us see for this derivation what happens. Again, again in the same manner for this system we have temperature as one state variable whose value is required to be specified. So, variable is temperature and its number is 1. Pressure is another variable whose value is again 1. The amount fraction sum of amount fraction of each constituent present in each phase should be equal to uh, sorry. Then we need to specify the amount fractions of different constituents which are present in different phases. So, let us consider the phase number 1. There are c minus 1 number of constituents. So, for phase number 1 you have c minus 1 amount fraction terms. Now, except for phase number 1 there are p minus 1 phases and each of remaining in, in, in each of remaining in remaining p minus 1 phases all the c constituents are present. So, you have c times p minus 1 number of amount fraction terms which you are required to specify for p minus 1 number of phases, but for phase number 1 you are required to, re, to describe only c minus 1 number of amount fraction terms. So, we can determine the total number of variables that is needed to be specified as sum of all these variables that is c minus 1 into p uh, c minus 1 plus p minus 1 into c plus 2. 
So now we can lift these brackets and we can see C minus 1 plus uh, P C minus C plus 2 and this equals to as C cancels this equal to P C plus 1. So therefore, now you can easily see when we have considered that suppose constituent number 1 is not present in phase number 1. So, it leads to a decrease in total number of variables which are required to be specified by a numeric value 1. When all the constituents were present in all phases, the total number of variables were PC plus 2. Now, here when we say phase constituent number 1 is not present in phase number 1, then you have just one less variables that is in relation to because component number 1 is not present in phase number 1. So, you have one less variable to be specified here in this system that is PC plus 1. Let us now see how many equations that are available in the system. Let us first of all consider the sum of amount fraction terms for each phase being equal to being equals to 1. So, for this we know that uh, since Amount, component number 1 is not present in phase number 1. So, we, uh, so we start with amount fraction component 2 in phase 1 plus amount fraction component 3 in phase 1 so on so forth up to amount fraction component C in phase 1 equal to 1. The equation still exists, but the only difference is that amount fraction of component 1 is not a variable because its value is apparently 0. So, therefore, equation the sum of amount fraction type equation still occur exist for phase 1, phase number 1 and all other phases. So, there is no change in the number of these type of equations these are still p. Now, let us consider thermodynamic condition of phase equilibria therefore, chemical potential equality condition. The chemical potential of component 1 in phase 1 is 0 because chemical because component 1 is not present in phase 1. So, now these type of equations as you can see for constituent number 1, these type of equations is less in number by a numeric value 1. Here you can see for constituent number 1, there are p minus 2 number of thermodynamic conditions of phase equilibria. For all other constituents, there are p minus 1 number of such thermodynamic conditions of phase equilibria. So, when we sum all this P minus 2 plus C minus 1 times P minus 1, what along with the total number of P equations which are available from sum of amount fractions condition. So, we get total number of equation available as equals equal to P plus when we take this whole sum P it, it comes as P plus P C minus C minus 1. Right. So, again variance of system we can determine as total number of intensive variables that is P C plus 1, total number of equations available P plus P C minus C minus 1, which we can which we can solve for and what we get is again you can see by solving for this equation algebraic equation what we get f equal to c minus p plus 2. Now, you can see whether all the co constituents are present in all the phases or some constituents are missing in some of the phases the phase rule equation remains the same. So, phase rule equation or phase rule is independent of the fact that whether all constituents are present in all the phases or not. Having said this, now let us consider the applicability of this phase rule. Let us, let us test this phase rule. Let us consider a gas, therefore water vapors, which are confined to a particular volume. So, if when you have only water vapors, so number of phases is 1, water is the only constituent present in the system. So, C is 1, F equal to C minus P plus 2, therefore C 1, P 1, what you get degree of freedom 2. This means two intensive variables, usually temperature and pressure or temperature and concentration you can say must be known to duplicate the system exactly. What is the meaning of duplicacy of the system? 
Let us consider a saturated solution of uh, sodium chloride in which there is presence of sodium chloride as solid phase is also present. So, you have 2 is the number of phases which are present sodium chloride and water are two constituents. So, degree of freedom for the system is F equal to C minus P plus 2, C is 2, P is 2. So, plus 2, so C minus P plus 2 is 2 minus 2 plus 2 that is equal to 2, so 2 degrees of freedom. So, for a system in which saturated solution exists in equilibrium with solid solute, for such a system the degree of freedom is 2 that is if you specify temperature at pr and pressure as two state variables, then all the intensive state variables will have a constant value whose value you cannot change. If you do so, then it means you will disturb the system, you will disturb the total number of phases, the number of phases will not remain to them in that situation. So, it means at even in the uh, on in, in, in any part of the world you can go to if you keep the temperature and pressure of the system constant at same temperature and pressure the saturated solution of sodium chloride aqueous uh, uh, aqueous uh, saturated aqueous solution of sodium chloride which exists in equilibrium with sodium sodium chloride will always have all the values of intensive state variables as a constant value it means that system will have same refractive index value, same, uh, same concentration value and so on and so forth. So, with this discussion we come to the end of this uh, lecture. So, in the next lecture we would try to observe the phase rule in the light of reactive system and we would also try to see how it helps us to, uh, to uh, draw phase diagrams for different component systems. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. Uh, dear friends, we hope that you have liked today's lecture. So, uh, if you want to give your feedback for this lecture, you can mail us at info.cc at that rate and ic.in. We will be meeting again soon. Till then, take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you so Thank very you. much.